everybody. It's 3.45 a.m. here from Shanghai, and I'm excited to have JT Fox with me today. So what is From Shanghai to the World all about? Our goal is really to have conversations with amazing people like you, JT, who can present a unique, authentic perspective of uh, the interviewee that not everyone is really able to experience with them. We want to talk about topics that not everybody has the courage to tell, in order to provide inspiration and role models like you to others to show growth also through vulnerability. So JT, first of all, you're the kind of person who made it from broke to more than 70 uh, countries in the world. You are becoming the next billionaire. And my first out of five question would be, what's the difference between the mindset or the thinking of most people, millionaires, and billionaires. Well, first of all, did you go, did you stay up until 345 or did you go to bed and wake up earlier? I think that's what everybody wants to know. Uh, that's first, that's what I want to know before I want to know. That's the mindset, <laughs> right? You either haven't slept yet or you went to bed really early, you woke up and you're going to go back to bed. So you have to tell the audience that first of all. Okay, I slept three hours, I have to admit, and I got up at 2.30 a.m. to shower and get ready for you. And that is up. pure motivation. Well, First of all, there's the mindset of most people is how much does it cost um, and what they cannot do. The mindset of a millionaire is like whatever it takes. And the millionaire of a, a billionaire is literally, I mean, to be a billionaire, there's a level of luck, right? I mean, anybody can be a nine figure like me. And just by, if you're really good at what you do, you work hard, you do things, but the billionaire, right time, right place, opportunity. But in the end of the day, it's all about the level of risk, right? If you if you um, take risk out, you take opportunity out. Just take a look at it, crypto as an example, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not worth a lot, even if it's at 3000, right? You have a choice. Do I take $1 million and I put it all into crypto at 3000? Yeah. And that 1 million is now worth like a lot, let's say. Or do I just put 50,000? which then crypto goes up, let's say $30. Well, obviously it made you a lot of money. A billionaire is like all in, right? Elon mm -hmm. Musk went all in, not once, not twice, three times. And that's the thing. Some of us have a fear, especially when you make money, you get to like millionaire, 10 million, 15 million, 20 million, 25 million. Then you're like, you've already made it, right? You have a lot of money. And then of course you don't need any more money. So then it was like, do I go all in? Or do I just hedge and diversify and grow? I took the approach of like hedge and diversify, which developed to a nine figure net worth. Mm -hmm. But looking back, I probably should have got all in, which I'm now doing more strategically than I was doing before. So that would sort of answer that question. Okay, well noted. Thank you. So here in Shanghai, normally I always interview the people here from Shanghai. So you're an exception. And uh, I know you read a lot of newspapers, you're well informed all the time. So you know about finally the Shanghai lockdown also happened. So there is a lot of experts here nowadays who are thinking, hmm, what do I do afterwards? They're thinking of leaving the country. I know it's also a crisis for many of them. And I'm wondering, do you have some advice for them? What advice would you give them to choose their next country, their next destination, their next step in life? I mean, listen, lockdowns suck. There's no question about it. And in America, it depends where you live, right? Where I was in Chicago, triple mask and everybody's afraid not going anywhere. And then you go to a place like Florida, it's like there's no pandemic. And, mm -hmm. and it's really the environment where you're from. But when the pandemic hit, don't forget, everybody left Dubai, right? It's a perfect example. <laughs> everybody was like afraid, blah, blah. And then Dubai reopened before everybody else. Dubai is like popping real estate is worth more. There's no question that China will continue to grow. Uh, mm -hmm. China is continuing being a superpower in the economic. It, it's not going to slow down by any means. And sometimes people are moving, but what are you moving to? You've established a base. And, and just like some places, like, oh, you live in Florida. Well, now there's hurricanes. It sucks. It's disgraced. It rains yeah. every day in the summer, but you got nice weather here. You got good business climate. And then you live in California, you overpay in taxes, you're homeless, this everywhere, but you have nice weather 300 days out of the year. So there is really no perfect place to live. You know, it's so mm -hmm. there's good and there's bad. And, you know, there are certain things that the Chinese government that, they, that that's the way they operate. And so like, if you don't like it, you leave. Right. And so some mm -hmm. people have left, some people had stayed. Um, some people do not like what's happening in America with blue states, right? New York, California, yeah. Chicago. So let's move to Florida. Let's move to Texas. Let's move to um, Tennessee. 
And so people have a choice to do what it does. The grass is often not greener on the other side. And mm. um, I mean, if you just take a look at the advancement of, of what China has done, uh, you know, in just technology wise, or just, I mean, five to eight years ago, nobody can really name any Chinese company, right? China Petroleum yeah. would be the big one. Now you have Tessent, Alibaba. Um, you know, people can name people like Jack Ma. They can name like, you know, all the big names, Weibo, all the big names that normally nobody could name. So China does come uh, a, a long way as well. And I think for expats there, and sometimes you're at a disadvantage because you're an expat, but sometimes you're at, a, at an advantage. So there, there's, you know, positives and negatives and everything to do. So if you want to leave, leave. If you want to stay, stay. Because <laughs> nothing I say is going to change their mind. Um, yeah. it's not your mind, but just know there's positives and negative in everything you do. Mm -hmm. And we should probably not make, um, an emotional decision in, in a crisis like this now. Well, but I, I mean, clearly it sucks. I mean, obviously the whole world's seeing the, the pandemic's pretty much in today, just as we do this interview, a judge struck down no masks on planes, right. And airports, which is, I mean, ever since the pandemic and today the air, people on the plane had no mask as of last night. And that was liberating. Wow. And so, you know, it was liberating some people. I'll be flying in a couple of days and I'll be, and in Norway, I was there. There was no mask on the plane. There was no mask at the airport. And, you know, each states and countries had a different way of dealing with things. And, yes. you know, but it really sucks, especially when we're this far along in the pandemic. But, you know, it's, you know, no one's ever been really transparent about what happened, why it happened, when it happened. Yeah. And so the people don't know. And so there's massive distrust in everything that people mm -hmm. do. So you just kind of, you kind of have to, to live with it. And it sucks now. It's been like three weeks probably for you guys now. And, uh, you know, but you know, there, there's an expression. One of my coach says this shall too will pass. Mm. And, and, and I think, I mean, just take a look at China, right? A lot of people said, Oh, well, what they did early on wasn't smart, blah, blah, blah. Well, let's talk it this way. I mean, China experienced more economic growth than any other country at the beginning mm -hmm. of the pandemic because of the things that they did. Other countries didn't, you know, and so China benefited from what they early did on. And now, obviously, those moves are great now, but are they great now that it's a full circle? But now it's crazy. Now you got supply chain issues and, and you've got <laughs> a lot of things being delayed because a lot of things are expected of China. And so there's just no perfect system, um, yeah. a perfect system. So but plus if I, by the way, if I ever want to re-enter the country of China, I actually can't say anything bad. I have a 10 year visa, which I don't want to be revoked, which is very hard oh, to get. Yeah, I, got, I realized I looked at my passport, I have a 10 year D visa, which I did not think I, uh, that I would have. So for some reason, I, I went to China several times. It, it's very different. When you go, you, I'm from Canada originally, but I live in America to see China. Because on one hand, the first time I went, you go to Shanghai, you're at the Hyatt Hotel, right? You're on the top floor. You got the bath, wow. it's beautiful. And everything's just so big and this. And mm -hmm. then the second time I went, I went to the Lamborghini Hotel and there's like, you know, the most comfortable robe mm -hmm. ever. Lamborghini's a lobby, whatever. And then the third time I go out to speak and it's in the middle of nowhere and there's a ditch where you have to go to the bathroom in a ditch, right? <laughs> Um, and then the fourth time, the lady that drove me ran out of gas and I had to drive seven, I had to walk seven kilometers to the gas station. And then she, with a water bottle, try to fill up gas and go back. I'm like, no, no, no. So we gave a hundred dollars to the guy with chickens in the back. Like, I'll never forget that. The guy had chickens in the back. So it, it, people don't know that on one hand, but it's kind of like, um, almost South Africa as well. You have Johannesburg, which is so big. And then you have the outskirts, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, China is so interesting. Um, uh, in I love, their growth and development. I love hearing the two sides of Shanghai that you have experienced that many of us also know, which brings us to my third question. So in, um, in this um, video cast, I wanna show also a vulnerable side or a different kind of side from people. Like people always uh, perceive you as you're so strong, you're so knowledgeable, you literally like you're a self-made man, you've achieved so much in so many countries. So. Can you share something with us that a lot of people actually may not know a topic that you don't really talk about, um, a different side of you that many of us may not uh, see? I mean, I always said there's three personalities of me. You're on stage, funny, publicly entertaining, powerful business, very, very tough. And then personal, kind of like very quiet introvert. I'd rather be alone, to be honest with you, uh, because I'm so around around public all the time. 
But my brand has always been a very transparent. You know, I talked about this morning about a mistake that I did on a deal that, you know, probably the greatest deal ever. And I made a mistake by talking about it publicly, but not mm -hmm. the details of it. But then someone saw what I did and then reported it. Uh, I recently met Tom Brady and about a week before meeting Tom Brady, it's like, hey, I'm going to be meeting Tom Brady, not where, not how, not what we're doing, the, you know, the greatest football player of all time. And then people message his agent, he's this, he's that. And he just say the pure hate. And unfortunately, as much as I want to be able to share what goes on, there's always someone watching and there's always someone who's talking bad about you. There's always someone trying to take you down. And so I think you just have to be who you are and you have to be your authentic self. Um, and I do believe in, in keeping a level of privacy. I don't discuss anything privately because I hear the thing. I, I'm not one to share my problems or emotionality because I believe that there are people in the world who have it way worse than me. You know, there are people that don't make a lot of money, people that have handicaps, people that have suffered tremendous loss. I mean, you know, people talk about COVID being a scam, right? So I take a look at how many people died of COVID. Imagine you had a family member and they have COVID and they die and you can't say goodbye. You can't see them. You know, they're dying. You know, they're in hospital. And, and and the last thing you even put some music towards what I'm saying. I think that's on your side. <laughs> uh, it's oh, not w. my side. That is your side. That is not my side. <laughs> so hold on. Is that as we say, it's you and Fen. It's uh, it's uh, destiny right now. It's supposed to is be. Is that your that. side or my side? I've never seen. I told you they're listening to us. They're listening <laughs> to us. That's good. Yeah. So this is something I really love actually about you that you always share these kind of things um, with your clients. By the way, that was on my side. Things. Could you hear the music? Or it was just blaring. Yeah, I did. Yes. Yeah, and by bad. the way, so what? here's what happened. What happened is someone was watching me and all <laughs> of a sudden I said something and then there's, which is now, maybe that was a call. You have to get off. It was my alarm. You, you The interview has gone long enough. So. Mm. Okay, so I got to wrap it up. I actually have two last questions. Go ahead. So number one, most important. So my company in Shanghai is called Full Potential Partners. And it's all about unlocking people, teams, and so on. And you're the person who always says, I don't invest in deals, but in people. So what characteristics and people are you looking for? Or how do you um, like see a person's full potential? Loyalty, strength, no excuses, do what they say they're going to do. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. I still remember loyalty um, years ago when I saw you in, um, in Los Angeles and Zurich and um, when a lot of people, when the thing with your business partner actually happened, which now brings me to the last point. Oh, look what I got here. Munich five years ago when I met you, your, um, your tie. I still have it. Partner look. Awesome. Good. So last question for you, because I know you're a very busy man. You're really good at reading people and you also seem to somehow see potential of, of different people. So we met five years ago a couple of times, although you know so many people. I know exactly Isn't where you're going. So I'm going to answer this. So when you okay. said you were going to go to Shanghai, you're living in Germany or, or like Europe. It's very difficult. You took a risk and it was very difficult to acclimate. And five years later, you're still there. You're building a brand, you've built loyalty, you've built a base, and you're done with very few people are able to do. And 99.9% .9 of the people never would have been able to do what it is you do. And on the second, I just to get me on an interview, that's a miracle in itself. The miracle were three minutes late for my next meeting with a billionaire for my, by the way, for all I say, and you got me to be late. You got me to come in this interview. And five years later, you've shown great loyalty. Anyone who doesn't know you, who doesn't do business with you does themselves a disservice and they owe it to themselves the same way I've got a chance to know you amazing heart always care always delivers always present and it's an honor to pleasure to know you thank you so much for your time JT for being here with us all the best and I'm gonna be on your webinar in one minute uh, in one hour at 5 a.m thank you all the best to you see you thank next you for time. everybody watching <laughs> bye bye